Okay, this video is to help you with the solving absolute value equations on IXL. Okay, um, this lesson is over solving equations that have absolute value bars in them. Okay, for example, 2 times the absolute value of x plus 4 equals 10. Okay, now I know some of you could just come up with the answer, you know, what x would have to be um, even without doing what I'm going to show you. This is really what you uh, want to eventually be able to do in Algebra 1. Uh, before we do it, I want you to see what happens when we look at two simple absolute value equations for a minute. Like, if I gave you, if I wanted you to solve the absolute value of some number is equal to 3, okay, that means the absolute value of what number would give you 3, that'd be 3, but it could also be negative 3. Okay, because the absolute value of 3 is 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. Okay, so you get two answers. Okay, remember the absolute value is the distance from 0. Okay, so the absolute value of 3 is 3, because the distance from 3 to 0 is 3. Okay, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, because the distance from negative 3 to 0 is also 3. Okay, what if I had you solve another simple equation? The absolute value of some number x equals 0. Okay, the only number that works is 0. Okay, 0 is 0 away from 0. Okay, now if I gave you the absolute value of something, like the absolute value of x is equal to negative 4, okay, do you see that nothing would work? Okay, absolute value can never be negative. So it doesn't matter what number you put in for x, the absolute value of it will never be a negative number. So there would be no solution to that equation. Okay, so before you even solve these absolute value equations, you just need to know that if you end up with a number, a positive number, on the other side of your absolute value, you're going to get two answers. Okay, if you have an absolute value set equal to zero, you're going to get only one answer. And if you have the absolute value bars set equal to a negative number, there isn't going to be any answer at all. Okay, there will be no solution. Okay, but other than that, okay, other than knowing that, uh, to solve the absolute value equation, here's what you do. You make sure the absolute value bars are alone on one side of your equation and that there is another constant number on the other side. Okay, and if that's not true, you just need to do some fixing up to make that happen. Okay, then, when that's true, you're going to set whatever is inside the absolute value bars. Okay, it's not going to be just x. It's going to be something messier. But you're going to set that equal to the number and the opposite of the number on the other side. Kind of look at this. Go, go back to this example here. If the absolute value of something is equal to a positive number, see we're setting it equal to the 3, and we're setting that stuff equal to the negative of 3. Okay? Um, if there's a 0 on the other side of your absolute value bars, you're just going to have one equation. Okay? Whatever is inside the absolute value bar is equal to 0. Okay? Just one equation. And if there's the number is negative, on the other side, there's just no solution at all. You don't even have to solve it. Okay, let's look at some. I'll try to explain this better. Okay, let's solve the absolute value of 3x plus 1 is equal to 7. Okay, all I'm going to do, since the absolute value bars are alone on one side, and I have a number on the other side, Okay, and this number isn't a negative. Okay, all I'm going to do is set 3x plus 1 equal to 7 and negative 7. And I'm just going to solve two separate problems. And I'm going to get two answers. 
Okay, so when I solve the first equation, subtract one from each side, divide each side by three. Okay, two is one answer. Okay, when I solve the other equation, subtract one from each side, 3x equals negative 8, divide each side by 3, negative 8, I'm just going to keep it as negative 8 thirds. I have two answers that work. Okay, there's two solutions to this problem. Okay, if I put 2 in for x, or if I put negative 8 thirds in for x, I promise the absolute value of 3 times that number plus 1 will equal 7. And you can test it, but I just don't want this video to be too long. Okay, here's another example. 2 times the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 1 equals 9. Okay, first thing I need is that absolute value bar expression to be alone. Okay, i got to get rid of the multiply 2, and I've got to get rid of the subtracted 1, Okay, just like when we did two-step equations, get rid of the subtracted or added number first. So add one to both sides. So 2 times the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to 10. Now get rid of the multiplied 2. So I have the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to 5. Okay, so now I'm set up. Now I'm set up to do the, the other work because I have the absolute value bars on one side and I have a number on the other side that's not negative. So all I'm going to do now is set that x plus 4 equal to 5 and set the x plus 4 equal to negative 5 and solve both. Okay, for that first equation, I get an answer of 1. For the second equation, subtracting 4 from each side, I get an answer of negative 9. Both of those answers will work. If you put them in for x, okay, you're going to have the left side equal to the right side. Okay, it takes practice. And guys, this is, this is um, Algebra 1 stuff, but some of you are ready to do some of this, so give it a try. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions.